Hello, and welcome to another fun and exciting edition of the Fun and Victorious podcast. I am your host, Andy the Game Maker, and on today's episode, I interviewed my sister, Alita, aka Legal Bites. A lot of you know her. She's done really well on YouTube. She's done a really great job curating content, giving us a really good, solid understanding of what's going on in the legal world with all the current events happening, which has been fun and exciting learning about all that. And I had a really great time speaking with her, so I'm really glad to be able to present this to you. But before we jump into that, of course, there's only one thing I got to do. This is going to make money. Please help me. Please help me. Crypto Cartel is a two to eight player game where players must work to build up their own resources in order to accumulate as much cryptocurrency while playing through the main deck three times. Players earn the ability to earn cryptocurrency as they collect cards of similar types and then exchanging them during the game. Simultaneously, the cryptocurrency gives each player the ability to earn cards from the Silk Road deck. These cards give players the ability to attack their opponents, defend any impending attacks, or fend off the DEA. The DEA cards appear in the main deck during the second and third rounds of the game, forcing a player to give up their most valuable production line. You must develop production lines with multiple cards in succession as quickly as possible, and in order to do this, you must make effective trades with other players. But be careful, get too far ahead and everyone will go after you. To secure your copy of Crypto Cartel, please go to my website at anythinggamemaker.com. Each copy supports my efforts to improve the programming. You can even donate on my website. I'm not sure if you knew that, but you can. Or you can subscribe to my channel. Just simply hit the notification bell and... Be sure to like and share this video as well. I'm also on now on Telegram, in case you didn't know this, I have a link on Twitter, but you can follow me at t.me slash Andy the Game Maker. Again, that's t.me slash Andy the Game Maker, and you'll get all the notifications on video drops, podcast drops, anything that I think is very fun and interesting, worthwhile. I promise I'm not going to blow you, you all up all that often, but uh, it's just another great way to stay connected with me. So with that all being said, let's enjoy the show. show this is in uh funny victorious with andy the game maker and uh on today's program i have none other than the the one the only the 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 legal bites of course do you want to take a moment to briefly introduce yourself uh yes i am the uh the the one who took all of the best genes in the family uh (laughs) i am andy's nice mug i am andy's sister yep or better yet andy is my brother uh somehow i was born into that whole situation somehow (laughs) there is there is there's a very basic explanation for that you know what it is we don't need to go into it a penis went into a vagina oh no (laughs) (laughs) well that's the i'm i'm it's factually correct (laughs) <laughs> yeah but we don't we... <laughs> okay go ahead sorry i i, I totally yeah so <laughs> in, case, in case anyone's wondering this is this is probably the, the episode where legal bites turns into legal bitch no i'm kidding <laughs> just no <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding no it's <laughs> lighthearted i love i love my sister dearly yeah you know. i love you too <laughs> but you're saying though you know just talking about our family growing up and, and so on yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like to, I like to tell people that, uh, we grew up in a big Catholic family that believes in divorce, but not contraception. <laughs> I love that. I, I've never heard you say that before. I, I, I figured... Oh, really? Did I never say, maybe I just said it to everyone, but the family. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so accurate. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah like it, it's, yeah. it's kind of like my joke with having, you know, a third kid on the way people are like oh you're having a third kid i'm like yeah i just don't know how to stop I just- <laughs> yeah it's like with dad dad you didn't know how to stop you just didn't know how to say you know what 
you know, enough's enough. And then he's like, Oh my gosh. He's like, I had Andy and I need to correct this mistake. So I'm going to do it again. So, no, but they, they, they uh, all, of course. Oh, no, no, of course. They, they totally do. And uh, this is all I try to keep things in perspective. Um, I try to keep things balanced. I, you know, I, Carnivore uh, diet aside, you know, I know I, I do that. There's a, there is a purpose for it. It's not just, you know, gimmicks and stuff. There's actually a legitimate health goal for me personally. Um, you can still hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, got it. I, I don't know why, but it seems like yeah, I, I can hear you. my audio was weird. No, but um, no, this th- this year has been um, good from a, a healthy go at it for uh, go at it perspective. I guess you could say, I don't know how you, I would phrase that specifically. I guess what I mean to say is the initiative I've taken to be on top of my health Mm. so with the carnivore diet i think one of the best things about that is the elimination of processed carbs i think that's at least one of the 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 major benefits of doing that and yeah and because of that i'm not indulging in candy ice cream process crackers stuff like that that will make you they can kind of bog you down it's it's kind of interesting Uh, and it's it requires some withholding from all that stuff, which I think is really, really good. I, I know that there are other, I'm imagining the lawyer side of you is coming up with a counter like, oh, you can do it, you can do it. this diet and still accomplish those objectives. You can, but. Yeah, I was literally just thinking like, I mean, have you ever tried the paleo diet? Because it sounds like. We, uh, I, no, I uh, kind of, sort of. It sounds just, like a less extreme version of the carnivore diet. I well here's it's like good... it's like it's like it's like going vegetarian instead of vegan. Right. I think that the, the well the, the problem with the paleo diet, or at least a I guess an inconvenience of the paleo diet is the it, it kind of requires you to prepare more in some ways. Um I, I don't know, it depends. I mean just it's it's a lot easier just to throw, for example, hamburger patties on a grill and just cook them right away and then boom, you're done, more or less. Or make eggs eggs and, and cheese a cheese so and i, I want to just want to be clear if i bring this up again um like when i for me the, the carnivore diet is you know all, all animal-based products right as well as and I, but I, I give myself some liberty to i do drink coffee so you'll see me sipping coffee because ho- coffee has no carbs um but nothing that will take me out of ketosis so for example if i want to do a seasoning or a type of spread on the meat just to kind of give it some more flavor just to kind of make it more less bland, if you will, I, I will go that far. So, um, mm-hmm. but at any rate, uh, so that's, that's just something I've been working on. And then also I gave up alcohol on January 9th. And I think I told you this already going a thousand days without sipping alcohol. So the next drink will be in October of 2024. So that'll be fun. Why a thousand? You know, I, I kind of got inspired by, uh, Chris Williamson because he did that. He did a thousand days. I was like, you know, what? I want to try that. And I okay. feel like because of Alcohol just really slows you down. And I just don't like, there's like grogginess. I can drink, listen, I, 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 I can drink, you know, a lot of alcohol if I really wanted to, but then there's, it, it just, when you have kids, when you have a day job, when you're trying to do all these other projects, you, you got to cut something out along the way. And I don't need alcohol, especially like now. I mean, I've had plenty of alcohol in my life to the point where I can go a day or two without it. Uh, and this yeah. is a thousand days. So it's just going to enable me to just accomplish more on a daily basis. And I think that makes sense. It's going to make, it's going to make my time more, it's more valuable. It, it enables me to time manage. And I think that's kind of like one of the unique things about doing all these things. I'll wrap this up here. I don't want to go too long on this, but um, like the carnivore diet, just eat basically just once a day because you eat, you eat everything in one sitting is the whole idea. And then your body goes into fasting. You, you develop those stem cells. Stem cell regeneration is what they say. And then, um, yeah, and then. That, well, I feel like that. it probably takes a while for, for it to break down the proteins. Anyway, I, I'm like, like an if anaconda. You're, if you're just eating meat. I'm like an anaconda is probably the best way to explain that. <laughs> you know, it takes a while for an anaconda to, to, to uh, digest all that, whatever it is, it, it, you know, went after. So um, like a big deer or something or. Whatever rodent. Sure, that too, but it's, um, yeah. So, anyways, so yeah. <laughs> and enough of this stuff. Let's talk about no. But the, in all honesty, I brought I brought you on to talk about you and learn about you, so everyone can kind of get a good understanding of 
Um, how you became legal bites. I think people, I'm not sure how many people actually know that story. I don't know how many people actually know <clears throat> your progression from into law school, you know, into the legal field and then eventually into the law tube universe, if you will. So yeah, yeah just, just like whatever, what, what's, what's the best starting point for you on, on that story? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I guess I decided Why, what, to go so to law let me, school. I, you know, I, threw, I threw like five different questions at you, so let me make this easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, why why law school? Why did you go to law school and start off with them? So, I, I think I was always one of those kids growing up that just did very well within an academic framework. <clears throat> Excuse me. Within an academic it. framework. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like having, having, you know, a, a, a semester of assignments and doing those assignments, turning them in, doing well on tests. Like I just, I, I was, I was good at, at working within that framework and then, <clears throat> and always having some kind of a goal ahead of me, something to sort of reach for or something to achieve. And then, um, you know, cause you know, I was in all the honors AP classes yep. in a lot, uh, inter international baccalaureate, like all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, uh, when I got to college, my, my, my first couple of years, I, I actually had enough credits that I could graduate super early, but I decided not to, because I wanted to have, you know, I wanted to study abroad and doing all, do all this kind of stuff. Um, but I, like some of my, some of my grades, <laughs> actually, when I look back, I'm like, some of my grades were lower, a lot lower than, than what I normally expect of myself. Um, and that was really just because like, I didn't really have any idea of what I was going to do after, after undergrad. It wasn't mm -hmm. until I, I figured out that I wanted to go to law school that suddenly I had another goal for myself. I had another like thing to reach for another thing to, to sort of like, sort of, um, like, it's not even necessarily like to, to push through to achieve. It's, it's a lot more like for me, when I, when I have a goal ahead of me, it's a lot more like I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to like, like the, the rope on a jet ski, you know, it's just sort of propelling me forward. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, so, you know, having, having that, that goal ahead of me was like one of the reasons why I did it. Um, and then also, I mean, you know, you know, how, how mom grew up as a, as a child of, of refugees and then a single mom refugee mm -hmm. kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think I always wanted to like put myself in a position where I was never going to be, um, vulnerable in those kinds of ways yep. that like that mom grew up and, you know, and, and like, like that kind of stuff. And so I, 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 and then also kind of looking at what a lot of our family kind of sacrificed to come to the United States. And, right. and, you know, it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, I, I always wanted to achieve something. I wanted to do something kind of, you know, bigger. I wanted to, to, to make a, make a good name for myself and be proud of myself for, for what kind of accomplishments that I can make. And, you know, and also sort of do it in a, in an area where I can protect myself and the ones that I love around me, mm -hmm. you know? So, so that was, that was, um, that was one of the, one of the, I guess, biggest reasons for, for why I wanted to go to law school. Um, that, and, you know, we grew up in a big family that likes to argue a lot and it was really nice having, having, uh, <laughs> having some training in, in, <laughs> in, in some, some tools for how to win arguments. <laughs> Especially when dealing with insane people speaking of keeping wanting to have a good name <laughs> you just you picked the wrong place <laughs> to keep a good name and that's on this program no i'm kidding um <laughs> no 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 of course i'm joking all the um, bad laundry <laughs> all the bad laundry legal bitches coming out no, <laughs> no. <laughs> i'm sorry oh, I, I just can't it's just, it's just so it just I, I, I'm a big fan of alliteration and, and assonance and cons <laughs> consonants. I'm just, I'm, I'm having fun with that one. I, I, that's almost like, that's almost like another persona you could bring out on like in law to and say, <laughs> okay, guys, check it out. Legal bitch is about to come out right now. If you guys don't <laughs> settle down. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I feel like I feel like she's 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 come out like like once or twice maybe. Oh yeah. <laughs> and people are oh, like, yeah. "Whoa, spicy bites." <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Legal 
legal bitch <laughs> no that's no um that, that's interesting i mean i mean I, of course i know a lot of this the, the you know your story your background of course having it grown up with you, you were there for a lot of it i was there for a lot of it um if not most of it um and obviously our, our upbringing is really big and um what, what's really i don't know like it's how do you look back at our upbringing with everything that's been going on right now in the year 2021, even 2020, we can even go back, you know, a year if you want to. I mean, how do you, what, what comes, I mean. You do realize it's 2022 now, right? Yeah, 2022. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I, this, this is my litmus test to make sure you're paying attention. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. So no, but you, you, you get where I'm going with this. Um, it, it just, the past like two years basically where I, is where I'm going with this, where everything that's been, a lot of crazy things have been happening. How do you, like, like, like what's, what's so your, funny. like, like, what's, what's, like, what's okay. like your thought process in terms of everything that's been going on? I mean, like, are you, are you optimistic, pessimistic? Like, like, what's, are you, are you concerned about some of the things you see? Like, like, what, what are your thoughts? Ah, uh, okay. Well, so I think that, um, you know, we're always kind of operating, you know, in a very grand way between order and chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And so were you Jordan Peterson orders? <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit, Yeah, <laughs> I might, no, I might, I might get a little, a little JBP here. That's, but, fine. Um, That's fine. No, but, but it's, it's, it, it's, there's always kind of a pendulum swing. Right. And mm -hmm. so chaos is usually the time when people are freaking out because things are shifting, they're changing and it, things are very uncertain. Right. And so there's been a lot of chaos in the last couple of years, but something that I think that is very helpful to remember is that chaos is also <clears throat> the birth of creativity, right? Chaos right. also presents opportunities if you can find them. So, so I, you know, on the one hand, I think that there's, there's been, there's been a lot of chaos. There's been a lot of uncertainty and that creates a lot of stress and anxiety. Um, but at the same time, <clears throat> if you keep your eyes open and you, you keep a level head, about things and you look for the opportunities around you, whatever it is that you are looking for in life, you are, you are totally able to find opportunities. If you are not only, you know, able to see them in front of you and not only hardworking enough to, to, to make them happen, but also courageous enough to, to take them when they do appear. Mm -hmm. So it takes, it takes a certain amount of, of diligence, hard work, you know, perception and courage, I, I guess. Yeah. And uh, that's, I, I would, I, I can definitely identify that with that for a lot of different reasons. Um, I had a really good discussion with Mark Calderaro yesterday about a little bit of this stuff. We're basically, you know, like just d jumping into the whole crypto cartel scene, trying to make a game like that. And that, that it was yeah. in and of itself very, very chaotic for me in a lot of ways, just because there is a ton of uncertainty on the back end because you don't know what's what's going to happen, you know, the next day or or even a year from the day. Um, and it's a lot of preparation, but at the same time, you just have to just go. You just have to go for it. Um, I, I think that's one of the things that I learned is that there are people who are just waiting to work with you, and I'm sure this is something you can probably speak of to to you know your own experience based upon the things you've seen and done, the people you've collaborated with. Uh, there's always someone just waiting to be like, yeah, let's, let's, let's work together. Let's, let's work on this project. Um, so so I, I guess this is probably a good a, a jumping point into like the whole YouTube sphere. Like if, um, like what, what sure. has that been like for you to go from, to, to just go feet first into legal bites. And what was, what was that experience like at first? I remember you were kind of <clears throat> on the, you were on the fence, a little bit of a fence sitter. You know, ah, this is a good idea. <laughs> this is, this is, yeah. uh, but it's also, and I, I get it because there's a lot of uncertainty on the, on the other, other side. So yeah. what, how do you look back on that? So <clears throat> for me, it's the, the story of me being on YouTube kind of starts like a few years before 2020, like 2020 is when I, when I, I opened up the channel and started putting out content, but a couple of years before was when I started, um, people there, there'd been a couple of times before that people at work, at work had been like, you should have a YouTube channel. <laughs> like that's really, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the first time was, um, when I was working at an employment law firm in, uh, in California and, um, the legal assistants that worked just outside my office would 
uh, start to increasingly ask me questions to, to clarify for them to and things about, you know, discovery or, you know, the process of, of, you know, the pleading stages and, and then it turned into like, where's Guam, <laughs> you know, like all kinds of like random questions. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, usually, okay. <laughs> it, usually I had to do with law. Um, but, but they, I would have messed they, with they, them a question like that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so they, they, you know, they started to increasingly, you know, come to me for these questions as opposed to other attorneys, because they liked the way that I would give context to really explain to them, um, you know, so that they could, they could walk away and fully understand it. And then, you know, the next time they're faced with it, be able to apply what they know or what they learned. Um, and so, so they liked the way that I explained things and they were just like, you should, you should like be a teacher you should you should you should teach law and I was like hey I would love to be a law professor I think that would be so cool and they're like no you should have a YouTube channel I was like such no a, such no a Gen way. Z thing no to way. say <laughs> you should I have know, a TikTok they, they both no they both they both are millennials too oh, like boy. they were like How not you yeah should have, should have covered for us my goodness holy shit okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> no but then but then, you know, at, at my, my next job, um, <clears throat> we would, um, we were in a, 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 a kind of an office that was sort of split up between various offices and, and in ours, it was very small. It was one of the partners, uh, me and one or two other associates. And, and so it was a very, like, it was a very familial kind of environment. Like we would, we would all kind of work together throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, we would, we would, you know, have a drink in the break room before we would all go home and go you know, for dinner or whatever for the evening. Um, and so we would just kind of chat and a lot of times it turned into discussions on politics and just policy discussions. And so me and this other associate, we're, you know, both kind of towards the center, but he was a little more left. I was a little more right. And, um, we would just kind of go back and forth and, and kind of talk about it. And, you know, the, the partner would be there in, in the discussion too. And, and the partner actually said one time, you know, he was like, I would love to see you guys have a YouTube channel together because the the two of you talking about this stuff is like really, really great. Like I, 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 I love just, you know, watching you guys go back and forth about it. Um, and you know, once again, I was like, that's not going to happen. Like, there's no way I'm not putting, I'm not putting this face out there on YouTube. Are you kidding me? No. I, I like my privacy <laughs> and, um, but, uh, but yeah, but then, but then what happened was, you know, 2020 was well, people total could get, chaos. get this on YouTube. They could get this on YouTube. <laughs> For those who missed the segment, this is the Bacon Lord. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> you were saying so eloquently about how people wanted to watch you and someone else on YouTube. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. Go ahead. Talking about policy. <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing else that you might be insinuating, <laughs> big brother. <laughs> um anyway i wasn't so, insinuating anything i was just being very plain what what, what the hell's wrong with you <laughs> my goodness i know you that's okay. what's wrong <laughs> no go ahead no but um no but that's so, but there's a very so, <laughs> intersection with policy and law obviously so go figure you have a lot to a lot to say about, about yeah. particular topics i mean there's there's there is a lot of in intersection you know like it's it's even even as much as as generally speaking especially early on with my channel i tried to stay away from talking politics i tried to you know like but then it was just like anytime i wanted to talk about something that was like seemed important to me i would be like okay but now i'm starting to get into politics and so i wanted so you know i was i was being very very careful about it and you know, not really trying to get too opinionated, but then, you know, then it's as, as I, as I grew more and more comfortable with it, I was like, you know what, like, I'm just, I'm going to say what I think I'm going to, you know, I'm going to you know, try to try to try to give things in a way that is fair anyway. And so that right. people from either side of the political spectrum can listen to it. But at the same time, you know, like give my opinion when my opinion is warranted, you know, it's not always warranted for me to give it, I think, but you know, right. from time to time, no, you know, why not? people seem yeah. to want to hear sometimes, you know what this reminds me of actually. So I've been, um, I, I did some research on, I, I've been, um, I learned recently about re revisit. I should say the prisoner's dilemma. Are you familiar with that by chance? 
I feel like I've come across it. If you describe it, I might, so it might trigger it more. It's rooted in game theory. It was started by these two mathematicians in the 1950s where basically they wanted to, they were hired by the Rand Corporation to do probability statistics on nuclear standoffs between the U.S. and the USSR. So they would, and it's, it's oftentimes used um, in terms of, and this is actually, this is actually kind of what you were saying. And I know it sounds like it might not be, but, um, but basically the whole idea is you have two people, right? Um, who get like interrogated separately. And so, oh. yeah, you know, one person will either stay, stay silent. One person <clears throat> will either, there's like two options basically. So there's like four different outcomes along the way. If they both stay silent, um, the, the, the negativity of the punishment isn't really as bad. If they both speak up, they both get, you know, it's, it's almost as really bad. But if one stays silent and one confesses, the one who confesses gets no punishment. The one who stays, stays silent gets, gets all of the punishment basically. Oh. And then, um, then there's a couple of different variations where it's, um, <clears throat> there's, <clears throat> I'm not dying. Um, there's like reward. It, it's broken down by like rewards and punishment, but then there's also temptation and then a sucker aspect of it um and then another one includes having a neutral stance and this is where i'm connecting the two of it but what's really weird is that um if if i remember this correctly i don't want to speak out of turn i get this wrong necessarily um hold on a sec here sorry um yeah so there's um but i think i think it's it's rephrased but i'm gonna try to see if i can share this uh, oh, okay. I, th- I, th- I might have found it. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just show this real quick. It's kind of like this. Hold on. I promise this is going to be worthwhile. Okay. <laughs> so like this right here. I'm not sure if you've seen this before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but then there's an additional column. I think it's on, on the end over here, but basically there's, there's, you can be either cooperate or defect, but then you can be like just neutral. Like I'm not, I'm not going to get involved. And it's actually, the outcome is actually, um, it, it's very bad. It, it suckers pay off if they, if they both remain neutral in that instance. Hmm. And I think what's really interesting, and I bring that up because of um, what you're saying about trying not to get political, because it's almost like, it's the way I kind of look at the political landscape nowadays where people don't want to get involved, people don't want to get connected with what's going on. And I worry that because of that, some really despicable people take advantage of those moments to mm. pull the wool over their eyes and, and, and be really deceiving. Um, but anyways, I, I think that's also kind of like, that, that's, I think that's a separate issue altogether from what we're talking about though, um, yeah. being, being neutral. But yeah, I, I, I get it. Just because being neutral is also being contentious, right? Um, you don't, you don't, I mean, it, pe- people don't know how to separate their ego from politics is, and, and, and no matter, it's just, it's just so dumb because it's dumb of me sometimes. Cause and you, you, you've probably seen me get into it online. Sometimes some people <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> sometimes yeah, I, I just can't, can't help it, but no, but that's the other thing is as of like, um, three, four months ago, I just completely took off Facebook off my, my, my phone. And I just, and I'm, I don't see conversations nearly as much as I used to. And because of that, I don't, I don't indulge and I, I don't engage because it's just ultimately a waste of time anyways. And these yeah. people, and, and, and I think uh, one of the things, best things I heard recently was James Lindsay said, the problem with Twitter is it's given these introverts a, a, a bigger voice than they think they actually have. And because otherwise, and, and it's not meant to be like, um, like a jab at a them knock against introverts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's basically just meant to be like, okay, I, I'm willing to bet you 90% of the time you, you speak with these introverts, they're not going to say half the things that they say um, that they would well, in, the, yeah. in the Twitter sphere. And I think, I think it's true of, of probably extroverts as well. You know, people get away with saying things through a keyboard that they would never say to another human being. Yeah, no, ever. I, I, extroverts like aren't, I, I, yeah, I've, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. I've seen, I've, you know, I've seen that in, in some of the comments on my own videos occasionally, you know, where I've gotten, I've gotten some, some pretty, pretty bad hate comments on mm-hmm. videos that really don't warrant it. Um, and, and, and I've often like thought about that. Like, who is this person behind this keyboard? Like what, like, what are they very, very angry about? that they are taking this out on a random person on YouTube, right? you know, like, 
because it's like, I, I, I wonder how that would be different if they were to, you know, have a face-to-face conversation about whatever it is that they want to talk about instead, you know, cause it's, it's, it typically would be, I mean, because then you realize that there's a human being in front of you, you know, like it's, it's so easy to forget that when you're, when you're operating between different avatars and pseudonyms and, you know, like, it's just, it's so easy to, to forget that this person in front of you is another human being just like you with wants and needs and desires and emotions, you know, thank you, thank you for recognizing me and my humanity. Go ahead and continue. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. So um, no, I, I mean, I, I think, I think it's just, it's one of those things that, that um, you know, one of the, one of the things that I did study um, in undergrad was I was, I almost double majored. I was like, but I would have had to take like one extra quarter at UC San Diego. And I just decided I didn't want to pay the money for it. I'm glad I didn't. Um, cause it wouldn't have been necessary, but I almost, I almost double majored. I, I majored in history, minored in sociology and I loved sociology so much because it was just so fascinating to study, to study people in groups. Um, mm-hmm. because you can, you can, you can find a lot that's very, that's very applicable to individuals as well between different groups. And, and, and it's, you know, it's similar to studying history as well. It's just instead of, instead of it being on a, t- a specific timeline, you're looking at, you're looking at groups of people, you know, and different cultural values and things like that. But, uh, but anyway, but one of the, one of the classes that I took for, for my minor was on, um, on forms of social control. And there was one portion of that that was Oof. about the, that the sounds ad- like, advancement. That sounds of- like, yeah. Heavy, heavy topic. Go ahead. <clears throat> Yeah. And it, well, and it was, and it was actually one of those like sort of precursors to going to law school too, because, because portions of it, were talking about law. We were talking about advancements in, in, in law and the way that law kind of changed over time and, um, and how there are some societies that don't really operate as much or as strongly on, you know, using a legal system, um, or didn't in the past, you know, like antebellum South, for example, I mean, they had laws like everywhere else, but like there was, there were a lot of, um, um, cultural, uh, aspects that would, that would provide a lot of ways to sort of control cultural behavior. Um, but, uh, but anyway, but, uh, all of that is a little bit off topic. What I meant to say is that there was one portion of that class I was talking about technology and how technology on the one hand, every time we advance technology, we do we do um, expand the way in which we can reach people that are much further away, but it always seems to come at a cost to those who are the closest to us. So, you know, with the telephone, you know, you can call your, your neighbor next door, but you can also call someone, you know, that's on the other side of town. And then that, and then that became long distance calling. And then that became cell phones. And then that became, you know, you can call through, through data. You can call halfway around the world, you know, and social media is the same sort of way. Like you can very, very, very quickly connect with people from anywhere in the world now, but sometimes that, that speed and that distance that you can go in that speed comes at a little bit of a cost, uh, with the ways in which we spend our time with people that are in person around us, right? Because we're spending so much time in our phones, on our computers, on, on all of these devices, you know, we start to lose the the world that's right around us. Right, right. Yeah, that's, it reminds me, the first thing that came, that came to mind that you just said, because I think about the game telephone, for example, we used to play when you were a kid. And Mm -hmm. there's, and that, I think that's a very good practical example of what you're describing where it basically goes from one person to the next, right. In terms of information being lost along the way. And, but I I think the bigger point though, that I, that I'm addressing, I think this is what you're also addressing as well is the fact that on the opposite end, the message doesn't completely get there the way it, it was meant to get there necessarily. And I think that's one of the crazy things about um, technology today is because whether it's texting or social media, even all those don't accurately describe, or they can't completely fully convey your thoughts to the other person. Yeah. Although I do, I do think what's really interesting is the fact that gifs and emojis, I, I mean, this very seriously or gifs as, as we have debated before gifs, gifs, I guess, I guess it is. GIF. <laughs> I know I, I Nick Kana got really mad at me for pronouncing it gifs. He called me a Philistine for it. 
<laughs> I don't care. Um, okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> A b- bunch of nerds debating about theory of relativity and and stuff like that. Gosh, oh my goodness! Um, some of this, yeah. Um, but anyways, so what I was gonna say was that um, when it comes down to, it's all good. Sorry, that's so weird. I just, I, I'm sorry. I just, I had to, I had, I had to, I had to counter that this idea of Philistines and. And uh, 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 um, theory of relativity. Anyways, what I was gonna say, what I was saying though, there, that's what it was. G- gifs, 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 however you want to say it. Um, emojis and emojis. I think those actually effectively help you convey how what you're actually thinking and how you're reacting to a specific response because it's very specific. And I think what I love about emoji or not emojis, um, gifs specifically is the fact that you can get very very specific with people on what you select yeah, and then they can truly, and then they get an even better idea of what you're trying to say. And I think that's at least yeah. one of the great things I've learned uh, with, with, uh, excuse me, um, w- w- with, it, with this technology, the, you know, the way, the way we've been communicating nowadays. So um, yeah, but there's also something that you said that I thought was really interesting because I actually uh, reminds me of a thought I had recently. And that was, I thought about my time in Iraq, my deployment, and something that dawned on me literally just this weekend is the fact that no one in my unit, no one actually killed anyone. Like, like we, we didn't do any type of actual contact with enemies, right? I mean, we've had our fair share of EFPs, IEDs, and, and rocket attacks, but we never actually, like no one actually pointed a rifle at someone to kill them necessarily. The only people who actually kill people during my mm-hmm. deployment, and this is, and I bring this up because this is kind of connected, um, because the the only deaths that we had, uh, you know, of enemy combatants, if you will, is, is from from aircraft, drones. Yeah. So the the fact that and, and yeah. that it, when you put that into perspective of what we're talking about, you're talking about weaponizing something at, at a distance and causing harm upon someone. Yeah without actually connecting with what's what's happening on the ground the, the humanity of, of what's actually yeah. taking place on the ground and to me yeah. that's that's kind of a that was quite the epiphany considering we have you know we have some people who are interested in and in, in, we know people who want to be pilots you know who are young want to be pilots and the fact that i was in more harm's way i was you know, less likely to co- actually actually inflict damage upon someone aside from maybe calling calling in the aircraft. I guess you could say that there's some. I mean, not me specifically, but calling in the aircraft for that. But the fact that there's that there's a human being who's actually doing the the deadly motion, so to speak, I think is kind of crazy. Um, and it just it just it just shows you how disconnected we are as human beings, whether it's through social media or just the way we do you know warfare overseas. Yeah places like afghanistan iraq or or, or wherever uh, it just i i really the, the the times that we live in in terms of people just not being able to connect with other people i really it what really just upsets me and really pisses me off is when people just hyperbolize the their their opposition and they think it's it's oh it's there's only there's there's me and then there's someone else who's the opposite of me and that's it the, the, those are the only two types of people that exist in this world it's me and then, Man, and then the opposite. And there's no gradation. Most people are in that, most people are in that gray zone. Yeah, <laughs> no, but this. The majority but, of people are, you know? Yeah, but I know you actually, get that. <laughs> oh, no, no, of course, of course. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I, I am such, I am so on neither. I don't know. It's my, my mind has changed so much over the past two years. It's kind of hard to keep up with. Um, I'm yeah. sure, uh, you, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that, but, um, you, you know, but basically it's just like, but there's that, that, that goes back to the whole conversation about the neither, right? I, I'm neither this, I'm neither defecting nor cooperating. Yeah. And because of that, there's, you know, there, there's suckers in a lot of ways, but, but anyways, um, so. But I mean, but back to, I mean, just to, on, on your point about, about the, the deaths being mostly by drone. I mean, I've, I've heard of guys that, that operate those drones from wherever in the middle of the United States. In, Las, to go in like through, Nevada. Yeah. In, yeah. In, in Nellis Air having, Force Base. Yeah. Having to go through 
you know, therapy for PTSD because of it. Oh, I, I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to diminish that. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt, but I don't want to diminish that, that, that they actually have an emotional impact from that moment, but go ahead. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it's, I, and it's, it's one of those things that I remember when I, when I heard about that, I thought oh, that's, that's kind of strange because it seems like it's just so distant. You would be able to put even more of a, of a wall between you and that. But at the same time, it's like, you just, you can't get away from the fact that that you're taking a life away from someone and hopefully it's the right person because at that distance, I mean, who knows, right? I mean, I don't know, maybe someone knows, but I don't have enough, enough personal, you know, experience with anything related to that, to really know exactly how, how well that technology works and how accurate it is. But Mm -hmm. I, I just, I would imagine that like, no matter how you take a life, it probably is just a very traumatic situation. And it's still something to wrap your brain around, you know, regardless of the distance and, um, and, and in some ways ways it would see uh, you're cutting out by the way kind of a distance you, it was kind of garbled up for a second there do you want to have uh an emotional you attachment like 30 seconds <laughs> yeah i'm what sorry like yeah no, I, I, no no i'm sorry like you were saying something really you know really interesting really profound i want to make sure we can ca- capture that go ahead i'm sorry you yeah were saying about like being what was what was the last thing what was the last thing you heard me say i think it was i'm sorry it was um that's okay yeah, yeah, but it was along the lines of just the emotional response from from experiencing killing someone and just like what that what that really is. Like, well, like- yeah, I mean, it's the 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 point that I'm that I'm you know making is that um, you know it's it's regardless of of the distance, you know, whether it's hand to hand combat or you know like killing someone with you know from in, in World War One where you're literally in the trenches with your enemy, you know, or or you know, now getting as far away as, as drone strikes from another continent entirely, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're still, there's still a life that's being taken away. And I think that there's, there's, um, there's a certain aspect of, of, you know, humanity that, that gets lost. Um, I think when, when we are operating from such a distance and, and, and in some ways, I think that the, the PTSD or the, the emotional impact, I should say, you know, like, cause not ascribing any kind of, of, you know, t- technical psychological terms to it, you know, right. I'm not a therapist. I can't diagnose anyone, um, I am. but no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, but like, you know, um, just uh, attack. Uh, that kind of, that kind of emotion, you know, like there's, there's always going to be some kind of emotion when, when we're talking about someone losing their life. And I think that in, in some respects, it seems like it would maybe surprisingly counterintuitively be even worse when you're operating from such a distance because of the fact that it's so maybe unexpected. Like I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these people that are operating these things probably have like like a sudden surprising, you know, impact from, from the experience and are like, holy F, like, what did I just do with the press of a button? You know? Yeah. You know what though? That, that reminds me what everything you're, you're describing just reminds me, I, I can't help but think about, um, my own personal response to, cause I, I, I you know, sure enough, I was driving, I think just to get like, you go get, get like a quick car wash and like my busy morning. Uh, before I started my work day. And I was actually listening to Ricada's live stream of the Rittenhouse trial. And just as Kyle Rittenhouse took the stand to give his own personal testimony. Yes. Um, that one, that one personally for me hit a little too close to home. Just Ooh. the way, the way he expressed himself on the stand. Um, I actually got kind of emotional when I was, you know, watching him, like, uh, re- you know, rethink of those moments, I think what was really um, horrible for me personally was the fact that the lot, some people uh, want, want, wanted to take pot shots at him for for what he was describing because it's just, it, to me, I, I just get really, really hot and bothered by stuff like that where it's just he's obviously, they, they can't, they're so, they're so in their tribal mind, they're so, like, locked in into their position they're, they got their deals you know deals their deals dug in 
I'm, I'm like how I'm being serious. I'm screwing up my words. Um, but they, they have their heels dug into their position and they can't, they can't say, okay, there's a very good possibility. I could be wrong about Kyle or whatever it is, what, whatever aspect of the trial that I, I've been watching, whatever piece of information that, that I've been holding on to that, I, even though I've, whatever research I've done to con confirm, Hey, this, this actually happened that they, they, they fail to realize that that, is a it's still a human being up there on the stand re regardless yeah. of, of, of what you think about them and it just kind of reminds me of one of the things that I, i'm I, I have a very muddled opinion of, of law enforcement nowadays but one of the things that has really upset me over the past year year and a half is how quick to judgment a lot of people are about law enforcement and just because i know for example i mean you you know like I, I took a very unique path to get out of the military, right, to, to, to land, land uh, uh, to make a living, so to speak. And one of the things that I felt was, um, one of the things that I personally experienced was it, it can be very difficult to find a job, you know, and, 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 you know, after having a career in the military, even with someone like myself who went to West Point, I was doing some very regular things. I, I will say that much. And there were some things I could have done where, it would have been easier to get a job, so to speak, but to, to actually you know, be yourself, have a fulfilling life, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult to get the exact job you want, regardless of your walk of life, where you came from, your well, background. And, um, and when you go from, from an environment like, like the military, which is such a rigid and rigid rules enforcing environment to right. going to, you know, talking about order and chaos, right. Mm -hmm. Then having, having all of the options before you, yes. I mean, I can imagine it. I feel like, I feel like every, everyone who gets out of the military deserves at least a certain amount of time just to figure out what exactly it is that they really want to do, because, you know, it's, it's, you suddenly have all this freedom. You should, you should be able to, you know, look down a few of the, a few of the paths to see what, what works best. For sure. Yeah. That, that's an interesting, interesting thought, but I guess the point though, is this, there, there are some jobs that don't really match up very well with a whole bunch of jobs in corporate America or, 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 or any, and, you know, and, and the, the point though, is this, is it's not so much that they can't have those jobs is that, you know, the, the HR managers or whom, hiring managers or whomever, they look at this person who has this, this, this very specific background and they immediately think, Oh, he doesn't have these specific things that I'm looking for therefore he's he's not equipped to have this job and what that turns into is immediately the you know these veterans who are getting out their their options are pared down significantly and they they're like okay oh, do this can't do that can't do this can't, I haven't heard back from this person this company etc etc et and this that list gets smaller and smaller and then some of them actually just like there's no other job that really makes sense aside from law enforcement and that's yeah. and that's what happens and, and they end up be, being in law enforcement because that's the only th and that's, that, that's what they do really well as, you know, I'm sorry, those are the skills that they've really honed in on, sharpened. They're really good at that, 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 that those related skills that would make a good law enforcement officer. And yeah. for people just to immediately assume the worst of those people to me is very, very troubling, disheartening. And again, it just kind of goes back to this theme of just being so distant from that person, you know, that, that, again, that's a human being, you know, th let's have some empathy and that's. Uh, because one of the things I've learned in the past year and a half as well is that psychopathy, a, a huge, one of the key attributes is, of psychopathy is, is a lack of empathy. Mm. And we have a lot of people out here who are, are, are you know, a lot of people who just go online and say, you know what, I'm just going to be completely empathetic or unempathetic, just be, or apathetic probably is a better way to, to put it and just, uh, just really be crass and hor horrible to these people. And then that they, they just like let it rip. And then that, that just, yeah. and that's how we, that's why we are, we are, where we are today in terms of this, yeah. this, this climate, this social climate, if you will, uh, that yeah. we interact think, with one another. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, what you, what you were saying about, um, about veterans and, and the police force, I, I've thought about this often because I, I, I've, I've known for a while that, that veterans tend to gravitate towards law enforcement as well. And, you know, there's, it, it, it always, it's always seemed kind of funny to me about the, the juxtaposition that we have in our culture between, you know, support the troops, support the troops, support the troops. And then there's this whole thing about law enforcement, you know, like, like we don't, we don't like law enforcement, 
but it's like, you know, you, you do realize that there's quite a significant overlap between these people. Right. I mean, especially, yes. especially in enlisted guys, like those are, you oh, know, sure. like those are, it reminds me, it reminds me of, um, God, I can't, I can't remember the name of it. You know, the, the other, what's the other, uh, mini series by Spielberg about world war two about the Pacific, the, the, not it, band of brothers. It's called the Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's called okay. the Pacific. Yeah, sorry, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bites is. You know, if, if if he watches this, he'll probably be. He probably will watch this. He's probably rolling his eyes right now. Um, because we we watched it together. Um, and and you know, it just it reminds me of this specific moment where um, where uh, you know, after the war, when one of the guys comes comes home, and then he's trying to figure out what he's going to do with his life afterwards. And he's at like this job fair. And she's like, okay, so do you have this skill? 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 And he's like, no, 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 no. And she's like, well, you know, you were, you were in the, you know, in the Marines or the army. I can't remember which one he was in. And he was, she was Army's, like, you know, for, yeah. for so many years, I think, I think Marines. Yeah. Um, and she was like, you know, you were, you were, you know, in for so long, you know, what skills do you have? And he's like, he was a mortarman. So he's like, well, I got really good, good at killing people. You know, it's like, and it was just one of those sad things because it's like, you saw just the awful things that he went through in the Pacific. It was just God awful. And then, and then having to try to like have some semblance of a normal life afterwards. And then realizing like, it doesn't really help you that much for career placement, especially if you're not an officer, because then, you know, like at least as an officer, you've got, you, you show that you have leadership potential and, you know, leadership experience yes. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But for, I, I, I feel, especially for, for enlisted guys. Right. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. No, for sure. Cause there's but, stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. You're going to, you're, I, I thought you're going to add No, it. I was, I was. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. Um, uh, I think. The little, the little technological delay here between you and me, uh, every once in a while it factors in, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, 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 and as it relates to, you know, back to Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, I think that, um, every time that we're evaluating witness, especially when the witness happens to be a defendant in a trial, you know, it's, it's, it is, it is an essential part of, of the evaluation to look at the way in which this person is telling their story and do they seem like the emotions that they are conveying are real? Are they giving too much emotion, not enough emotion? You know, like we do the same thing with the, you know, all of the statements that Alec Baldwin makes about talking about killing Helena Hutchins, you know? Um, and, and we're, we're always kind of evaluating that mm -hmm. it's very natural and very proper to do that. Um, I think that where, where people go wrong is like, like you said, forgetting that this is actually a human being. Um, and, and on top of that, I think that a lot of the people, particularly in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, I think that most of the people that were reacting to his cross-examination or his, or his direct examination, you know, and saying, you know, like looking at his, his emotional display and, you know, saying that they're crocodile tears and BS like that. Most of those people, if not all of those people probably did not actually watch the trial because right. that is not what I saw, you know, as someone, as someone who has not gone through anything remotely like that. And, you know, like, Lord help me if I ever do, hopefully I never see anything close to that. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it seemed very, very, very genuine to me. Right. Right. And it's what's really interesting is I learned this kind of connects with some things I learned with from Sir Francis Bacon recently. And I'm not sure how familiar you are with him, but he was Lord Pirate. Chancellor. Yeah. I'm sorry. A pirate. No, he was. <laughs> you're thinking about Sir Francis Drake. <laughs> um, Sir, Sir I guess Fran I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I took a class on the history of piracy. Um, by the way, I should, I should know. I should know. As the resident pirate on this podcast, I resent that. No, um, <laughs> no, but, but in all seriousness, so Sir Francis Bacon was responsible. He's, you know, a lot of major significant contributions to philosophy and science and law, even because he went to, what's really interesting is he went to Trinity college when he was like 12 years old. Um, I think schooling was just way different back then, which is why he did that Trinity college in Cambridge. And then he eventually be, like slowly, but surely went on the path to become a lawyer and then eventually became Lord chancellor of of uh, England, which is kind of crazy, but then he, because of all the 
he got embroiled in a whole bunch of scandals related to bribery and his role. Um, big freaking surprise, I guess. But hmm. he, but, but but then he pulled back and made several major contributions to science. He actually is responsible for the scientific method, as we call it, inductive the inductive method. And what are you smirking at? I feel like you're, you're smir- Did I just say something? And is there? I feel like no, no. I just I I have this thought at the back of my head that the reason why you know so much about Sir Francis Bacon is because his last name is Bacon, and you like meat. I mean, <laughs> although although hold on a sec, hold on a sec. Just sorry, as as a very quick aside, just because your last name is Bacon doesn't mean I'm gonna love you. I know Kev- Kevin Bacon. Oh yeah, great. Sir Francis Bacon, sure. Linda Bacon, absolutely not. She is responsible for is. she's responsible for, for fat theory and healthy at every size. Oh. Yeah. So mm. I'll take a bite for her later on. Um, anyways, um, so where I was going with this is this. So <laughs> sir, <laughs> I could tell you're you're thinking something just by looking at you. I was like, what are you thinking about? <laughs> okay. You no, know me too well. <laughs> I, I know you way, way too well. So Sir Francis Bacon is responsible also for coming up with what was known as uh, the, the four idols, which is basically these four different notions that people have that lead them to wrong conclusions. It doesn't not enable them to actually think things through. Like the first one is the idols of the tribe, which basically you just jump to conclusions. The second one is idols of the cave, which actually comes from Plato's cave, basically because the whole idea with the cave being that there's shadows and echoes that just completely distort your, your image of what's actually real. And then there's... Mm-hmm. Idols of the market. A lot of this actually connects with what we're talking about right now. There's idols of the marketplace, which is which has mm. to do with communication. So if I start, you know, communicating to you ideas, but you don't recognize the words or whatever, you're it's going to create some some um, l- lapse in communication. We're not going to be able to connect C I to I on very specific things. And mm. then there's um, there's the last one is idols of the theater, as he calls it, which is his criticism of like religion and superstition. Like, oh, this happened because of the gods or this happened because of whatever, right? Um, they they okay. use those to kind of justify their, their thought process. Um, and But basically the Before whole idea- they have like a scientific explanation for it or whatever. Yeah. And I think that like, for example, Idols of the Tribe is, is probably one of the ones I think is most interesting and most applicable to, to like what we're describing because we want to just jump to a conclusion. We want to just go after and basically just just- we, we want that that instant gratification for for a, a response or, or for um, an answer for why someone is behaving the way they do, but that leads us down the wrong path ultimately at the, at the end of the day. I mean, it, just, it basically turns it, into what, it everything we've, we've been describing. I mean, it, it definitely can. I think I think it's it's perfectly human and very natural, um, and in some cases proper to to want a shortcut to a particular answer, right? I think that you know that's that's why. <laughs> why we have trademarks right um because we don't want to have to put too many resources resources as in thought processes into investigating every single product that we have Mm -hmm. or that we're going to buy right Right. like like we we, you want to know that that the product that you're buying comes from the place where you trust your product to come from Mm -hmm. you know your your toothpaste comes from crest and you know it's it's not some other knockoff from you know halfway around the world that's trying to pretend to be crest and it actually has like all these toxic chemicals in it right that are going to make your teeth fall out like you want to be able to like not invest any time or thought into that at all and just know i'm buying this toothpaste because this is what I like. And right. I know that this is what is inside this tube. But um, so I, don't like, mean, I don't mean to catch you up, but it sounds like you're kind of going on the, on the path of like commercialization with, with this idea. Whereas, no, but I, no, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of using that as an example for, for how, how sometimes the shortcut can be good, okay. but there are, there are plenty of ways in which the shortcut can be, can be bad because you're, you know, like it's, it's, I understand why people wouldn't necessarily want to always invest a lot of time and energy and thought into, into reaching a particular conclusion, you know, like, like not everybody could, could watch the Kyle Rittenhouse trial as an example, you mm-hmm. know, like a lot of people work <laughs> during the day. Not everyone could spend 10 hours a day, you know, with that, even in the background, because maybe they're not working from home in a, in a kind of role where they can have that 
on and have it not be a distraction, you know? Um, uh, thankfully for people like me that there were quite a bit, quite a few people who, who were able to, because, you know, that definitely was a huge boon to, to, to my success and the success of a lot of my, my law two friends. Um, but, uh, but that's, that's just to say that, you know, not everybody has the time or the energy, uh, to devote to that. Um, and so they want the short answer. And in a lot of different respects, it could be politics. It could be, you know, what TV to buy, you know, it could be, you know, like, like you just, you, you, you find someone who knows a lot about something and say, what should I do in this situation? And yes. then just follow their advice. Right. You know, no, like no. it's, it's, I think, I think you're bringing up a lot of really good points really, really good examples where the shortcut is really good. Even to, to my own fault, I sometimes fall for those, but I, I'm just as human as, as the person next to me. And I, I think what this ultimately False. means, you're a robot. Yeah. Right. Um, but basically I guess where I'm going with it mm-hmm. is this, is that um, th- like, like there, so there's the emotional aspect of it. And then there's the, Oh, what's going on? I just, I just want to know what's going on versus, you know, who, who is this person? And I think that it's, it's one thing to, to take the shortcut to figure out a process or an event necessarily, but then like with a, another human being, especially with one that you know, that you know, I guess is where I'm going with it with someone, you know, or someone who, who you can actually reach out and touch someone who you, you can actually sit down and speak with. It's kind of upon, you know, your responsibility to basically go out of your way. I mean, maybe not go out of your way, but but what, I, what I'm trying to say is, I, I guess something that I, I learned, one of the things I like telling myself, reminding myself is, it, well, two things. One, always try to seek out the steel man argument, right? In other words, mm. what I mean by that is there's a straw man argument where it's basically, oh, I can just, I'm just gonna you know take the worst representation of this person and then beat that, which to me, mm. it's like, there's no, what's the challenge in that? What, where's, where's the gratification from that? Where's, where's the joy in that versus being like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to actually take the time to learn about this, this art, this specific argument idea or whatever. I'm going to figure out the best version of it and then try to see if my idea is actually better than idea and just seeing that, seeing where, where it takes you in that regard, but then also yeah. being um, charitable to, to those who, with whom you disagree. I think that's a really yeah. big one being, being where it's like, I don't think, I don't think that this person is coming from a bad, bad place. This is actually that's something that Socrates used to say, where he said that people don't necessarily want to be evil. If they actually knew that they're being evil, they would actually be really disgusted with their behaviors at the end yeah. of the day. And there's, it's, it, it's, this, it's this, a quote that I just shared recently where it's um, basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but, but um, uh, there's only there's only one good evil one one uh one, one good one evil knowledge is good and then evil is is ignorance at the end of the day mm. so if you're going down yeah. the path of ignorance if you're assuming ignorance if you don't want to actually learn about what's going on you're actually in and of itself practicing evil but anyways i feel like you're about to say yeah. something. yeah no i was going to say that I, I think that you know having having charity for the, for the the opposing viewpoint is is a is is i agree i agree it's a very big point um, and a very important thing to have. And I think that the other, the other side of that, I guess, kind of related to that is, um, you know, you can, you can have a lot of conviction in your ideas, but I think that where a lot of people go wrong is that they start to over identify with their ideas. Like it becomes a part of them so Mm -hmm. that if they are wrong, it means that there's a part of them that no longer gets to exist in this world. And, and a lot of people, and when I say that, I I don't know if people, if people fully understand what I mean when I say that, but it's like when you're, when you're arguing with someone and, and they seem to be just absolutely relentless and they, they, they refuse to give an inch, you know, maybe, maybe they are just very convinced in their argument, but there are times when, when, when you're arguing with someone or, or, you know, whether it's them or whether it's you, you know, um, it's, it's, there's a, there's a, there's a part of you that is, that is just arguing almost like just to argue because you don't want to be wrong. Right. And, and the problem, the problem with that is that you can't see outside of yourself in that instance and see that the, the, the truth I think is out there objectively, 
Like there's, there is, there is a singular truth that is out there. There are multiple interpretations of the truth. Just right. like, you know, there's, there's, there's any, there's any fact pattern in any lawsuit and you have at least two sides, right? Right. <laughs> Plaintiff and defense. There's, there's, there's at least two, and there may be different witnesses that see things differently, Correct. but like, but you know, at the same time, I think that where, where, where people go wrong is when they feel like if, if they are somehow how wrong they're, you know, they're not allowed to, to change their mind because if they do, it means that, that there's a part of them that dies with that idea dying. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That, that actually reminds me of, because this is actually what I'm doing right now. I'm not, I'm, I'm actually listening to what you're saying, but there's um, a poll that I posted um, recently. Oh, which is, I asked people, which do you prefer to be more, to be more right or to be less wrong? And which mm. is a, which is a really interesting way to phrase that because uh, it, it's being, being more, it, I think being more right t t you know, focuses on the conviction aspect of it, where you say, no, I want to be, um, I would rather just be, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm right and right and right. And I'll do everything I can to, to ensure that I'm right versus being, you know, when you say like, you want to be less wrong, it's you're, you're assuming that the, there's a possibility that there's that you're you, that you're looking at this from some with some error along the way, the the, 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 yeah. the trick is how much error, and yeah. that, that's like one of the one of the things I've learned or one of the things I've come to realize is that we all don't know the same pieces of information, but we all have the equal amount of blind spots from from person to person, generally speaking. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you know about law that I'm not going to know about, but there's a lot of stuff I know about you know from the military perspective. There's a lot that I know. That you'll never never know or, or be, able, be able to keep up with there's there are limitations to our actual bandwidth there's there are limitations to our ability to um bank all this information and, and store it because it reminds me <laughs> it reminds me of uh, episode of married with children where somehow christina applegate's character i can't remember where, uh, i think it was kelly is her name but anyways they realize she's like some wonderkin at some point she gets like i can't remember how it happens but she's like this like she's able to store all this information but what was really funny is that the like she's able to retain it but for every piece of information that she like just gained it was another piece of information that she lost and i think they went oh. like on a trivia show or something but anyway she was losing information as like like really like basic information getting stuff wrong <laughs> and it was um it, it's it, it, but that's true with all of us i think i think we're yeah. all like that to to a degree i think that with one of the things i've learned as a parent with with two kids and, and you know being you know responsible to you know um my wife as as well having a day job both of us have day jobs there's a lot of activity going on within a 24 hour period and i can barely remember what happened yesterday let alone a week ago just because there's yeah. just there's just a lot taking taking place but again we, we we all have limitations we all have faults and i think that's what people people forget is that we're not we always try to no, I'm sorry, not we, but there are some people out there that try to present, you know, that they, they are so focused on othering people that I really don't like it. It, it just, mm. it just really yeah. dehumanizes. It, it enables us to dehumanize one another. And I don't, I'm not a fan of that. So, yeah, um, I definitely agree. I think, and I think, and I think that there's, there's, there's multiple reasons for why people would do that. It could be that they, they just are, are, they don't want to invest any more time you know, into formulating their ideas. They just, yes. they're, they, they're busy. <laughs> yeah. They got other things to do. That's you know, like that, that could be, that could be one reason. I mean, it, it could also be that there's some sort of trauma somehow associated in their life to a certain individual that, who happened to be a certain political, you know, like on a, on a certain side of the political spectrum. This is true. You know, like, yep. like I, I, you know, like I've, I've, I've known, I've had friends, you know, in the past who have talked about like, you know, like wanting to, you know, be more conservative because her dad was more on the left and, you know, like, cause she didn't have a good relationship with him. And then she realized that she actually thought a lot more like him than she realized. And so she, like, why would she pose herself in, in that way when, when she just, she, I mean, when she really thinks a different way, you know, like, right. why, like why, right. You know, so there's people can be weird like that, man. Like it's just sometimes, sometimes people have a, a lot of illogical ways, uh, or, or illogical reasons 
for, for the weird things that they do that can sometimes be very harmful to other people. You know, th that brings up a really interesting point. And I think that one of the things I've learned is that some people think the way they do, and I, I need I need to do my own homework on this before I make any broad claims here necessarily, but at least something, an idea that I'm open to is I, it was a conversation between Dave Smith and Michael Mouse. And one of the things that they, they mentioned was that, and I thought this is a really interesting idea. I'm not sure you're familiar with Dave Smith. I know, and I, I know you know who Michael Mouse is. Yeah. You, know, you don't know who Dave Smith is? Nope. Sorry. So Dave Smith, he was actually just on Joe Rogan's <laughs> podcast recently, but um, like literally like this past week, but he's okay. also, he's a libertarian stand-up comic, but he might actually be the libertarian presidential candidate in 2024. Um, Interesting. I'm, not, I'm not joking. He's actually very well spoken. But anyway, anyways, one of the things that he said, I mean, that, I, I believe it. Any comedian could be. I, I feel like <laughs> stop. <laughs> I mean, not any comedian, but like, you know, like, oh, you're <laughs> saying because of their ability to speak is, is, is what you mean by I that. mean, their ability to speak, their ability you're to being, understand. Okay, you're legitimately being charitable people. right now. Yep. Yep. No, I, yeah, I, I, like, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, I really, oh, of course, and, the libertarians would pick a comic for their party. Yeah. What a bunch nah. of losers. <laughs> oh, like, no, no, yeah. no, no, <laughs> no. I mean, I really, I really think that, I mean, we've, we've had actors, we've had businessmen, we've had, you know, like all kinds of different people. Like, like, why, like, why couldn't, you know, one of the next presidents come from someone who understands how to, how to tell a story? in a way that people can, can understand and relate to. I mean, that's, that's part of the job, right. Is, is to, is to be able to relate to, to enough of America that they want you to run the country. I yeah, mean, now whether comedians, true. whether comedians are, 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 you know, well suited to the administrative tasks involved, I don't know, but you know, uh, but he, I mean, th yeah. these are the kind of people that are, that are, that are, you know, they are very good at, understanding the vibe in the room you know like that was something that trump did very very well was yeah. that he he was able to put his 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 finger on the pulse of america and like you know and to, to understand what people were going to emotionally respond to like anyone from any side of the political spectrum can 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 see that and if they don't then they are very very blind right that that, that goes back to idols of the tribe i would say in that instance where they, they just just jump to that conclusion that's presented by the corporate press. But anyways, so like with Dave, what's really interesting about Dave Smith before I get into like what I was about to say, it was a very interesting aside. Sorry. No, 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 it's okay. No, it was good. Um, no, because I actually, one of the things I like about what you just said is you just kind of pointed to the fact that this, there's a lot of opportunity for just about anyone in this country nowadays, which I think is, a, which, is a, which is a good thing, which is what we need. But um, yeah. so, but the, the, the point though, uh, well, Dave, Dave Smith is also very well. He's incredibly well spoken. He knows policies incredibly well, which is another reason why it's it's a very interesting the fact that he's very seriously considered running. But at any rate, one of the things that they had discussed is that I think that some people might actually be um, hardwired, so to speak, into their positions, and that's just stuff we can't avoid necessarily, which I think is kind of an interesting idea. Because, and then one of the things that Malice brought up in that conversation is that there's, um, there's a, a book called The Nurture Assumption. And then I'm, I'm totally paraphrasing the conversation, but basically the whole idea is they've done studies on people who, for example, are twins separated at birth, who, who grew hmm. up in two separate environments. Um, oh, those studies are interesting. Yeah. yeah they, they somehow both end up being like homosexual, for example, in some instances, even though they're in completely or separate... Se separate and oh, environments. Okay, yeah. yeah which yeah, yeah, yeah which is really interesting which is a yeah. really interesting idea um and it just makes me wonder like 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 how how far does that go in other aspects of, of our being right how you know our, our interest in sports our interest in the types of people we like to hang out with um mm -hmm. our, our decision making process to what we what we put in our bodies um, <laughs> um but at any rate um but yeah that, that's a lot, a lot of really neat stuff. Dave Smith is a really interesting guy. I recommend if you're not familiar, look into that. Um, yeah, it's if he runs, hmm. I, I think I'm, I'm not. I'm very serious when I say this. He's not a Joe Jorgensen. Um, if Dave Smith runs for president as a libertarian, 2024 is going to get very interesting very quickly because okay. of he has he has quite the platform and he's incredibly well spoken. Um, but yeah, that's 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 my take on Dave Smith. Okay, okay. so 
Go. What I would like to do now, well, for actually, no, before we do this, I want to, one of the things I wanted to address here in, the, in our conversation, um, I know we're going long here a bit, but I'm, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this quite a bit. Yeah. But, um, no, this is great. So today is February 13th. In three days, it will be February 16th, which a lot of people aren't familiar with, with that date. Um, but that's Lithuanian Independence Day. And that it's actually a day that you know you and I have a lot of we we invest you know invest quite a bit in that date. I might not be as expressive as as not like I'm not trying to compare myself to anyone or anything like that. Trying to say oh look at me like I I'm, I go all out or anything like that. But it's something that weighs heavily on my my heart. It's something that I think is a huge. I think my my Lithuanian background, my you know our ethnic background, I should say, is a huge fiber of my being so to speak and uh the the person that you're speaking with today in, in a lot of in a lot of different ways um including a lot of the things the people that i'm interested in but uh so how do you how do you look at v16 as we like to say v16 is vasada is uh lithuanian for february how do you how do you look at v16 uh going into 2022 with the way the world is today oh well there is definitely a lot of uncertainty um, and, you know, and, and I'm not a foreign policy expert, you know, on like the, the whole world, you know, especially with a lot of things that are happening in this, in the whole, the whole geographical, you know, area, um, there's a lot of sa saber rattling going on, so to speak. But I think that for, for Lithuania, I think that they have done very, very well for themselves being such a small country and making such a name for themselves. Right. Like I've, I've heard a lot of people, I mean, especially, you know, like, like they have, they have kind of garnered a reputation for themselves as a country that doesn't just talk the talk, but it walks the walk. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, like they, they, you know, for, for example, I mean, they were, they, they've been talking a lot about Belarus and Ukraine for years. They've been one of the loudest voices in the room about the things that are going on in those two countries. They allowed a, um, uh, a, it was, oh God, what was it exactly? Um, but like a, a, an official Taiwanese government um, kind of like establishment in Lithuania, I think it was like a like chamber of commerce or something, like something very simple. And as a result, you know, uh, the, the Chinese government was like, screw you, Lithuania, like no one likes you. And they're like, whatever, we don't <laughs> like you either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love. You know, I, I, like, I, I had no idea. That's amazing. Yeah, it, it was. Kind of, it was a relatively recent thing, but it's like they, they're. It's like this tiny country, and and it, it kind of it make it, it makes me feel very proud too that that's our that's our background because that's been you know my experience for us growing up as Lithuanian Americans. Um, you know, you know, our parents were very very loud Lithuanian Americans. Um, that were organizing demonstrations for, you know, banning the Soviet Union from the Olympics, from the LA yeah. Olympics, you know, and then like uh, taking trips to the White House to talk to President Bush, the senior, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, meeting with his cabinet and, and like that kind of thing. Like it was just like things that that were, I mean, mostly before my time. So right. I don't really have too many memories of the, mm -hmm. of like things like that you know, other than like just the constant conversation of like, like we have to like, you know, <laughs> almost, almost as if like, especially with our, with our community, like being, mm -hmm. being part of the Lithuanian American community, when you are part of a tiny, you're a part of a community that comes from not only just a tiny country to begin with, but then a tiny country that no longer technically exists on a map. It's like, when you are a part of that exiled community, you have this feeling of like, we are this country now. We have so many responsibilities. We have to upkeep the language. We have to upkeep the culture. We have to, you know, like we have to 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 have all of these, you know, kids summer camps so that they have connection and you know send them to to Saturday school so they have connection there and 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 all of these all of these these big things and it's it's the pressure is a lot more off now that they've been free since 1990. Um, but like, but there, there's still some, some remnants of that, I think, especially with our, with our particular upbringing. Right. Um, and so I guess, you know, like I, I, it, it, it fits 
the the reputation that Lithuania has right now in the world, it kind of fits with my, with my memory of our cultural upbringing within that community as like a, as like a, a, a almost almost like an expatriate community, even though we're all mm-hmm. Americans, right? right? Like we're mm-hmm. born Americans. If, if, you know, that's, that's my citizenship, that's my passport is, uh, is that 100%. Um, but like kind of growing up, like sort of in this like weird bridge in between two worlds, it felt like, right. Um, but it's cool that like the, the reputation that the country itself has, has developed is very similar to our, our culture that we kind of grew up with, which is like, yeah, we're small, but we're going to be really loud and we're going to be pit bulls. And we're going to tell people, you know, when, when we think that they're wrong and we, Mm -hmm. and we think that they need to be doing the right thing. Right. That's too, there's, there's a lot I can, I I can pull from that. Um, as I was talking for a while, no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. You said a lot of really good things, a lot of really interesting things. And I think that one of the things that I, um, you know, obviously with, with me, with the, the decisions I made in my life, obviously going in the military to deploy into Iraq, you know, that's very much walking the walk in my own way. Uh, mm-hmm. The decision to go to ranger school was another one of those as well, where I just like, no, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it all the way. And I, I was really, really proud to do all that stuff and, and accomplish all the things I did along the way, because again, I'm a value driven person, but I, again, I open this this conversation with it's a huge fiber of my being, being a Lithuanian American coming from having that that huge ethnic background. Like I don't just I I proudly put that little you know accent in my my last name um, when I, when I write it, and it's just like yeah, um, and and just it, it's because a lot of that stuff gets dropped off along the way, and I make sure my kids do it too, of course, but. Um, but yeah, I guess another question I have, um, not to go too too long on this, but do you are you worried that you know because you talk about how like you know ever since nineteen ninety happened, you know things are kind of like you know dropping off or loosening up, so to speak. Do you feel like there are members of the Lithuanian American community, or I guess the Lithuanian community, however you want to phrase it, like um, living in the U.S., who tend to lose sight of what actually happened prior to? Mm. 1990 is that a area of concern of yours at all i mean i think it's it's always possible right i mean memory fades in Mm -hmm. in any individual and in any community um but i think that it it also is one of those that like i mean i don't know if you remember the history classes we had that we had to go to at saturday school but it was like it, I mean, we pretty much learned like the, the same history lessons, like pretty much every year going down to like, all right, 1009 was the first year that there was a written record of Lithuania. And then like, you know, and then all of these other things happened, you know, and then like, you know, and then there was a, they were unified with Poland because we wanted to keep Russia at bay and like, you know, uh, and it was a disaster for Lithuania. You know, like, it's just like you, you have this whole long, long line of history, you know, going into, you know, having people that were sent to Siberia and, you know, and, 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 you know, like what, like when people, they didn't really have much food at all. And yet you had people that were like making rosaries out of breadcrumbs, you know, with like the very meager portions that they had, like. Uh, that at least was what we were being taught. And mm-hmm. my assumption is that that's continuing. And, and the reason why I feel like I can assume that is because I have been to some of the, the summer scout camps, you know, as, as an adult to kind of help lead things in the years since then. Um, and, um, not every summer, cause obviously like living overseas makes things a little bit difficult, of course. but like, you know, like, like we would have, we would have really fun night games where it's like oh we're being invaded and <laughs> we need to <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like here's your task is like you've got to find this one forest brother he's out in the forest and he's got a special message and that's going to save lithuania you know for those for and those like confused, they still play those yeah so when she says forest brother they're referred to as the partisan the partisans who who fought against the soviets during yeah. during during the uh, basically during the second world war just trying to um Maybe not. I want to make sure I'm, I'm making I'm making a, a, a clear distinction. They were not fighting alongside with, with the Nazis or the Germans. They were fighting for themselves uh, right. against both of them, really. 
And yes, in one instance, when Germany was like, yep, Stalingrad or, or uh, Stalingrad is not going well, here are some weapons, you know, to, so you can help defend yourself, whatever. And they're, as, they're, as they did their own little tactical retreat. Um, and of course, they took advantage of that. But at any rate, yeah, that it's there. There were no, it just, and I think that's these were really, these were guys that literally were like, they were they, a lot of times they were like, like farmers that would just go and like live in these little like underground huts in the winter time. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, like they just would like pick off Red Russian soldiers. soldiers usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause mm -hmm. for the, for the most part they were, they were, they were Soviet. Right. Yes. And, and, you know, there was a, there was a Nazi invasion at one point, but most of the history was against the Soviets. And so like, they would, they would just be, it was like, it was guerrilla warfare essentially out in the forest. And so, no, it um, was it, not and, essentially. And it, it was, <laughs> it was. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fair. Yeah, fair. I'm so, but lawyered. No, I'm and it's, and it's <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's viewed typically as like technically a failure because Lithuania was still invaded. It was still annexed. It was still like, it became part of the Soviet union. But one of the ways that, that people look at it now is that it also was in, in, uh, some ways a success because of the fact that in Lithuania, they, there was a reputation, um, for people that were supposed to be kind of sent there to sort of like colonize the area mm -hmm. that were like, screw that. I don't want to go to Lithuania. Like maybe Latvia, maybe Estonia. I don't want to go to Lithuania. Cause I'm going to get shot by these crazy <laughs> people in the forest. <laughs> right. So like, so they, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't populated as much by people coming in from places like Russia. Um, that's at least what I learned anyway. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe, maybe some, maybe some historians on that, you know, can correct me, but that's, that's at least what, what I learned was, you know, one of the, one of the successes of that whole endeavor and at great personal costs. I mean, even, even just, even just, you know, supporting these guys with food or information could get somebody tortured to death. We have someone in our family who was tortured to death for precisely that reason. Um, and then, you know, it buried in a shallow grave until her mom like bribed enough Soviet, you know, officers or whoever to find where she was buried so that she could bury her in the family plot. So like, so, you know, things like that happened. So anyway, but like, but today, I guess I, I don't have, I don't have enough data that would tell me that the current community is forgetting anything because I've seen instances where they're still, they're still doing these, these like night game histor history lessons, right. Where they're like, all right, like, don't get caught and don't get sent to Siberia, you know, like, you know, during this game and, you know, try to, try to go and, and get the get the, the, the three colors of the Lithuanian flag. You know, you've got to go on these different <laughs> missions to these different parts of the woods and come back and right. hopefully everybody stays safe. Like don't, don't twist an ankle, but you know, <laughs> right. Yeah. But, um, but it's like, there's still a lot of these things that are getting, that are getting taught, um, uh, these days that I, I think that makes, that still gives me a lot of hope that they are still sort of learning a lot of the similar stuff that, that we learned as kids. Okay. That's, Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, no, there's, there's, I, I just am not, not as nearly as connected as you are. Um, I, I, I don't know. It just, I went off the beaten path, you know, so, so soon yeah. after high school that it was hard to, to and that's hard. With a lot of people. So, um, yeah. And it, and it's hard too, because like when you grow up in a very small ethnic community, especially when you are spending every single Saturday with these people, it can be very difficult you know, like if, if things don't mesh perfectly well with people, it can be very difficult to, uh, to see how things can change socially between different dynamics after college. Cause I feel like, I feel like for, for me, things really shifted and, and gelled a lot more after high school um, with a, with a lot of my Lithuanian American friends that you didn't really have as much of an opportunity to do so because of the path that you took. Right. Right. And it's, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's, and it's kind of manifested in some, some very strange ways, I think for me personally, but, um, but that's all, this is all really great though. Um, 
and then well, I was wanted to talk about one more thing. But uh, anyways, I, I it, maybe it'll come back to me when we're when we're doing our fun segment here. So okay, so um, because I know how much you you I know you're just it's so weird because like you, you it, it's so funny hearing you describe yourself as a centrist, but like it's I don't know like. Oh, that's what I wanted to mention before I jump into this is that I, I what I also really I find very frustrating is we can just talk about this quickly. Uh, but um, the the way it feels like the struggle of people who were lived under Soviet oppression is I just feel like that's easily forgotten about. I feel like there's too much mm. of an, an oppression Olympics in the U.S. to the point where we hyperbolize, for example, Nazi Germany so much that we it's almost as if they were the only bad guys that have ever existed in in you know world history ever at any point which i think is just a rather a rather ill approach in in so many different ways um i'm sure some people can come up with some counters but the, the thing the point though is this is that the fact that you have um we have like the soviet union you know who's just as bad probably if not worse i'm not trying to be you know, again, go tit for tat necessarily for from a competitive perspective, but just statistically, the fact that they're around much longer, obviously they could, you know, you know, have, you know, cause more damage towards a, a larger population, just, just out of just being around for much longer, they, they have that ability to do that. And right. I feel like that's just, people just don't seem to bat an eye at that. It, it's just when you say, oh, the Soviets were bad to some people, uh, or weren't they so bad? Like you can hear a pin drop in the room in some instances where it's like, to me, I find that very disheartening. I, I guess that's it's because I, yeah, it, it's because Stalin was right when he said, you know, one murder or one death is a tragedy. A million murders is a statistic. Right. It's I, it, that's that's oh, and, and you're and, attributed and the, and the, to him in the perspective of the people where they say that oh, all these right people died. because and they, that's and that's why like when you when you when you talk bigger numbers that that you know technically it's unfathomable you know, for the average human being to actually be able to think about to the, wrap their head around the difference. The difference is so much harder for people to to understand. I think sometimes, and especially because it's like okay, you know, maybe the Soviet Union wasn't exactly genocide in the same way that that you know, the Nazis were responsible for, right? Right. Um, and, and that's tragic and awful and should absolutely never happen again. Unfortunately, it has happened since then, you know, multiple times. And every time it happens, people are like, this should never happen again. But like, you know, we're, we've been, we've been not the best at actually preventing it from, from happening, unfortunately. But like, you know, at the same time, you can say, that's bad. You can also say, this is also really bad too like this is also in some respects worse because the the amount of loss of life is just more there are more people that died it may be a more diverse group but there are more of them that are gone right right under this particular regime you know like it's just if you're just looking at loss of life in the numbers one is bigger than the other right and that's not to say that the other one is good it's not at all. It's awful. It's horrible. I've been to Auschwitz. It's a horrible, it's a horror. I had a, I had a horrible feeling when I was there. It was terrible. Right. Right. It's yeah. Cause the thing is it's, it's while the numbers are the same, the, the standard of, of the standard units on, on a, on a one-to-one scale are all, like maybe not exactly identical, but from, from a humanity perspective, they're, they're the same, right? Person died here, person died there and they died yeah. under, unnecessary terms it was all just unnecessary right. it didn't have to happen that way um right so okay <laughs> so on, on that grim note um uh, on that like, I can't, I can't <laughs> okay um but anyways so on that grim note we're actually going to pivot to a fun segment here um <laughs> was planning on doing that i really apologize for for, for that awkward transition here <laughs> I have no choice. I want to wrap this up here. I'm having I'm having a great time, but like I just want to make sure we can at least do the fun portion here. So yeah, I have curated very much in the same no wrong one in the same vein as our good friend Andrew, aka the Legal Mindset. You and I are gonna do a uh, a tiered list. If I can, is it, what the heck is that? I just had it. Oh, this is it. Okay, I'm sorry. Bear with me just a moment. Sure. Okay. Cool. Okay. So. Where, uh, uh, almost there, almost there. 
Uh, I have to do it like this. Okay, cool. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. I have curated 16 anti-communist memes that you and I, <laughs> you, that, you, that you are going to judge from, okay. it goes from superior all the way to F like that. Eh, that's not very good. Um, okay. I don't know if I actually, well, I don't want to say anything. Okay. Um, okay. Here we go. <laughs> so the first one out the gate. All right. Edgy American teenager that thinks Eastern Europe misses the USSR. Eastern Europeans who watch their families starve to death. Uh, <laughs> S to F, where does this a, rate? That's a pretty good one, but I feel like there's probably going to be better ones. Let's let's put that at a B. Put that at a B. Okay, we're moving yeah. Stanley to B. Stanley the manly. Okay, next one. All right. Communism and teenagers, <laughs> brutal dictatorships <laughs> and genocides. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, are you noticing yeah, let, theme here? <laughs> I am. I am. Let's uh let's put the let's put that also at a B. At a B. Okay, got it. Yeah. Right, right with Stanley. Okay. Cool. I feel like it's gonna be hard for me to to have an F. Because I I I yeah. Well yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see. I don't wanna okay, you know, okay. give it away. All right. 832, Google search, how com how to start a communist society. 843, how to stop a communist society. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it took that person 11 minutes to figure that out. 11 whole minutes. Uh, let's put that at an A. I like that one. Okay. That's pretty good. 11 minutes to enlightenment. Got it. All right. Moving that to A. <laughs> All righty here. Next one. All right. Oh, here we go. We got <laughs> friends here. Okay, Joey yes. and then Phoebe. I love, going at it. love it. Communism. Communism Communi has never, has never Communism worked. Has never. Worked. Never. So. Communism has never worked. It was never it true. Was never, never true communism. Was, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Let's let's put that one as an A. That's an A. Okay. That one's actually pretty good because I think. It's pretty good. Yeah. It, so that one's going to go up, go for an A. Okay. All right. Next one. All righty. Moving on here. Okay. Oh, this is great. Genocides, famines, and brutal dictators under communist regimes. People who think communism could work. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, let's see this one. I mean, it's, I mean, that is where they would be sitting under the, under a genocide, famine, and brutal dictatorship, right? Yep. Yeah, um, there's a lot of regret in that that face right there. Yeah, I think you know what, but let's put that one as a C because it it made me think about it okay. rather than it being like an actual like, like okay That's first fair. reaction. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I can I can get on board with that. Okay. All right. Next one here. Okay. Communism, dictatorship, human rights. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. <laughs> oh man. That's just too real. <laughs> <laughs> that is very real. Let's uh, let's put that one as a as a B as well. As a B, okay. Yeah. You're being rough on these. I, you know what? It's because I, I feel like there's gonna be there's gonna be one that's going to like have like a like a really big reaction, and I feel like that's gonna be the one that's gonna be an S. All right. Socialism, capitalism, communism. <laughs> <laughs> eh, let's put that one as a uh as a c as a c yeah okay. all right moving on next one next one okay all right every attempt at communism has evolved into executions and dictatorships teenagers <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it in a fire. Yeah, let's give that one a B. I like a that B. one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Going to do B for SpongeBob. Then we're going to do... All right. Next one over here. I have never done... I've done nothing wrong ever in my life. I know this. And I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love a great Arrested Development meme. So let's give that one an A. That's actually not Arrested Development. Is it not? No, it's Parks and Rec. Holy crap. Oh, I still like it. Give it an A. Okay. 
it's um it, it's funny i would because... think that was maybe from like one of the more recent seasons no 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 it, it's um uh what's his face uh henry weekman he's he was on it towards like uh the later seasons and because he was john uh. ralph was dead and then john ralphio's sister and they were nice. both really crazy and he was like a, i think he was a dentist is what it was and he was always going after tom haverford um <laughs> And like, cause they were competing with each other. Some, oh, cause, cause Tom Haverford was dating his, his daughter is what it was. And, um, because they broke up, she made all these lies about him. And, and of course she believed, or he believed his daughter over time. Of course. Um, yeah. And just went too far. And this, this is kind of, a, I know this and I love you. It's just like, <laughs> I've never done anything wrong. In my, so. That's funny. That's yep. funny. That's funny. All right. Here we go. This one. Nope. Communism makes everyone equal by bringing everyone down, not lifting them up. <laughs> Dirty face. I like that one. I like that one. That's an A. Okay. It's true. All right. All right. Next one. Americans, why does everybody have to politicize sports? Poland, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. I've never seen that. That's crazy. Yeah. You have, I, I can't tell what this is. I want to say that might be Che. Um, uh -huh. That's definitely that's hammer, and sickle. hammer and sickle. Can you see what this is? No, I don't. That's the Antifa flags. Oh, shoot. Um, I, that's wild. I, that one's, that one's going to be a superior one because that's is, some dedication. This here, I think. If this photo is in fact true, because I, I pulled this off the internet, so I have no idea if it, the, the validity of this. Okay. But if this, this actually reminds me of a quote, because I was telling you I saw, um, so this is, so you, is the superior? Yeah. Okay. Um, reminds me of a quote from the the dream team. I'll, I, I'll share the quote at the end. We'll get through this, but I'll share the quote with, uh, at the end. Um, okay. okay. All right. Um, all right. Dark humor is like food. Not everyone gets it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> Especially under Stalin. Um, yeah, that's 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 gonna be a superior one. <laughs> it's just that's just good. Okay. And it's just true under Stalin. Okay. Um, let's see here. All right, next one. iPhone. We phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's good let's give that one an a an a okay yeah it's hard i'll be honest it's if it's a half decent meme it's hard to really be like eh that was like yeah yeah okay what's missing from g-lag <laughs> you oh no <laughs> oh no uh I mean, it's like, I feel like I, I feel him pointing at me because I feel like we, we, we would have been, we, no, actually, no, I, I know for a fact we would have been sent to Siberia just oh, in our family history. Oh yeah. We would have been sent. Statistically, we we yeah, had family true. that was sent to Siberia. Actually, yeah. did you, did you know that mom's dad's dad is still buried in Siberia? Mom's dad's dad? I had no uh, idea. Yeah. I didn't know until like a, like a year or two ago. She like randomly mentioned, I was like, are you kidding me? We have, we have, we have family that that's actually buried in Siberia. Yeah. Um, so. in, in case there was ever a doubt, I will never be a communist or anything of the, of the sort. This just gives me one more reason. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. This is superior. So superior. Yeah, it's just, okay. it's just superior. All right. And then I think you might like this one. <laughs> oh i i feel this one in my soul because it is indie <laughs> yeah. it is so true it is so true don't tread on me <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> and then she's the biggest communist when I'm when I'm the one that's eating, even though she's just <laughs> had like a huge meal. And it's like there's no way that she can like really fit much food in her stomach, at least yep. not in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, but she just pretends that it's empty all the time. Oh, for um sure. this is superior. Okay. Because doggos. <laughs> all right. And then one last one. You might have glimpsed it briefly but this one might be my favorite familiar to you 
Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. It's Starvation isn't one. funny, but the fact that this is this this comparison is very, very yeah. It's like because it got that that oh no reaction out of me, I feel like it should be superior. Yeah. It's superior. Oh you, no. You, you know or you, you know exactly what you're getting out of this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we go. This is the the tier chart for the anti-communist memes. First iteration. Maybe we'll do <laughs> another one here. But yeah. Okay. Uh, so um I will go ahead and save this. I'll take care of that later. Um, but yeah, no, um, I had a really fun time talking to you, of course. Um, Me too. I just want to say it's been really fun watching your star climb on YouTube Aww. within the YouTube community with all the law tubers. I think what's even uh, more special about this is, is you surrounded yourself by some very incredible people very quickly. I think that they all have taught me a lot about the law in the world that we live in today. They've also taught me a lot about YouTube, which I think is really cool too. Yeah. I've, yeah. And, and, and it's been, it's been really fun watching. And I want to say thank you for, you know, keeping me in mind and helping your, your older brothers, typically the, the, the older brother who's you know, helping the, the younger si sibling or what have you is it's typically where the mind goes just because there's experience. I, I would, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying not to speak out of turn when I say this, but, um, yeah. but I, I don't take any, I, I think it's actually, you know, encourages me more humble when I, when I you know, am with you because I've seen you work so hard to create a name for yourself and, you, and you've done just that, which I think is really amazing. Oh, so thanks, I really, thank you very much for all that. Well, I mean, and I, and I can say this sincerely that I think that, you know, when I, when I first, you know, after I, I <laughs> lost my job in the pandemic um, and then my, my answer, you know, came to be that I'm going to start a channel on YouTube and, you know, and figure out some other stuff on top of that. You know, it's, it's, I, I understand why, you know, I had some friends and, you know, maybe some family members who kind of looked at that answer and were like, Oh, okay. So, oh, 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 <laughs> like you're, oh. so you're not going to look for a job at another law firm. That's going to be a bit more stable and secure. And you're, going to go on YouTube and try to make money that way. Um, you know, like, so I, I, I definitely understand why, you know, there, I, I probably might've reacted the same way to a friend of mine, you know, saying the same thing, but I will say that, you know, like outside of Mr. Bites, you have been my, my closest supporter, um, and my, my, my biggest supporter, um, you know, which he lives with me every day. He's like practically a producer you know, for the channel, um, you know, especially early on. Yeah. Um, and, which is cool. Cause he actually kind of, he kind of gets experienced like in all seriousness. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, you know, but I was going to say like, you know, outside, outside of him, like you've been my, my biggest supporter since day one. Um, and you've been very vocal about it. And I really appreciated that because it's like, you know, like it's, it's, it's very easy to find people that don't believe in you. It's a lot harder to find people that do believe in you, especially when you're, when you're taking, taking a big risk and, and doing something that is so totally different than anything that, that you yourself would expect even, you know, so I, right. I've really, I've really appreciated that. And I, and I love, I love the fact that I can bring you kind of into this, this community of people because they're, they're, they're really great. Like I've, I've worked in, I've worked in some good law firms, um, you know, uh, some, some better than others, but you know, I've got to say that like right now I've never quite felt this level of collegiality among lawyers, like this level of support among lawyers. Right. Um, you know, like there's, there's one firm in particular that I, I think would be a, a pretty, that you would, would give it a pretty good run for its money because it was a great, great place to work. A lot of really great people there, um, and very supportive people, but it's just different. It's different being in this kind of an environment where we're all kind of like behind the scenes communicating with one another and, and helping each other out, you know, not just with our content, you know, and with our strategies, but also with like, you know, the business of law tube and, and, you know, how we can all turn this into something that we can, we can really live off of and, and continue to provide content for people and in ways that, that don't sacrifice our own, <laughs> you know, our own uh, other jobs or other, you know, like sources of income. 
So, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's been, it's been really great. And I love, I love the fact that I found these people and, you know, and I love, I mean, there have been so many people that have been, you know, viewers that have reached out and that have become, you know, part of, part of like my team and part of, you know, like, uh, these, these people that I, that I talk with quite a bit about different pieces of content and, and mm-hmm. things like that and give different bits of advice and whatnot. Um, and, uh, like, like, you, you know, my, you know, the, the editor that's, that's been working with me on the clips channel, who's doing an amazing, amazing job. And I can't wait for it to get monetized so that I can start throwing more money at him because he's, he's just like far and away, just amazing. Um, so it's, it's just, it's been, it's been a crazy ride. It's been a great ride. And, um, and I'm really glad that I was able to, to, to kind of bring you into it too, because it's been, it's been fun. It's been fun. For sure. Yeah. And then I, I want to, on, on a humorous note, uh, I, thank you so much for bringing me into this. Um, while you're doing this, I was actually, forgive me. I was, I thought about something <laughs> that, that I, um, I've, I've done, I did this before on my phone. I was going to post it and share it, but I, I guess it's a good opportunity to do this. How, how I feel. you guys are so good at making make me not feel like this necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah like all, all, everything you guys say like sometimes like yeah like um it's like yeah what 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 alita said what what nate said yeah i i, I, I completely <laughs> i concur with what they just said <laughs> <laughs> yeah so well well thanks oh. well again no thanks a lot i really appreciate it um I, I look forward to doing this more often um yeah you know, this and then is great. I, yeah this is this is fun this is exciting and then um i don't know about you i'm gonna go enjoy some uh bacon lard <laughs> okay gross all right all right thank you very much all right yeah see you.